on dot one. Uh, and mainly, the, there's kind of warranty statuses that I'll highlight there. Uh, anything in 200 family means all good, right, success. Anything in 300 family means go somewhere else. We're sending you to another URL, another direction, another site. Uh, 400 family means uh, client side error. You asked for something that you couldn't have or something that wasn't there. Uh, 500 means the server couldn't fulfill your request, right? Um, this is good to know because the difference between a 400 and a 500 error is how we start troubleshooting a problem, right, for the server. So all the other ones, uh, I think the kind of just there, we'll say. So first one, uh, like I mentioned, the one, 101, uh, so <coughs> through the protocols, telling uh, the client or telling the client back, hey, we've upgraded and we switched to 1.1 .1 instead of 1.0, right? Um, usually, this would be, this would be uh, added with a upgrade header, I believe, saying, hey, we've moved over to 1.1, .1, a better protocol, right? We'll probably see this come out a little more maybe with switching from 1.1 .1 to 2, right? And switching protocols. Okay. 200, it's all good, right? Uh, so, 200 okay, it's kind of the most common one, so you expect to see. Uh, 204, no content. Uh, essentially, everything was good, but nothing really to generate or come back. Right? Um, I should have taken that off. I don't have a good example of that. Um, 200 okay is easy. 204. The leading. Leading? Yeah. That would be a good one. Thank you. Yep. All right. Um, yeah. Thank you. I'm going to yeah. back in there. <laughs> All right. 300, redirection. Right? So, a few of them here, right? Move permanently, found, or see other. Uh, essentially, you've made a request, but I'm telling you to go somewhere else, right? Uh, maybe for, instead of domain.com, go to www.domain.com, right? That's an example of a redirection. Uh, or maybe you are updating your site to have new links, so all of your old links get three, three redirected to another site, right? Um. Coming through. Right? Squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, 400 client side error. This means you messed up on the request, right? Uh, as opposed to 500 error where they messed up. So some, uh, some ones here are 400 bad requests, right? Which, however you form your request to the server, not so good, right? Uh, my favorite one is 402 payment required. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen implemented uh, successfully, or not successfully uh, in, in a very true fashion, uh, but I want to see it, right? Um, <laughs> just hey, you can't have this anymore. You need to pay, pay up. Especially working in the managed hosting field, I'd love to have it up there. Uh, for the forbidden, very common, right? You've asked for something you cannot have, either because of your IP address or the user or anything like that. Okay, uh, they need to get for for uh, the forbidden. Four hundred four not found is probably the most common one or one of the most uh, well known. That means you asked for something that you could not have, or sorry, that's not there, right? Uh, if you've asked for index one .html instead of index .html, uh, and then four twenty. Um, it's not a, a very widely implemented response code, but it's from Twitter. Uh, and Twitter, Twitter's response code, you get a 420 if, uh, let's come down here. Keep going, Tim. Uh, 420. <laughs> it's told you need to back off from the API a little bit. Uh, so then I research kind of looked at kind of just interesting to talk about that came up. I thought it was kind of nice, right? Uh, Basically, Twitter rate re limiting you when you make API requests. Okay. <laughs> Hardy har har Twitter. Hardy har har. <laughs> and again, that link is there in the slide if, if you need it. Um, <laughs> 500 error codes or server side error codes. Uh, this means that the request that you sent was good, but somewhere along the line, the server messed up or could not handle that request. Most often, we see this when it comes to between. A uh, proxy connection between maybe a front end server and a back end server, application server, right? Uh, the the at least for our environment, the culprit most of the time, for example, with a 503 uh, service unavailable, was going to be like a Tomcat application in the background running that just kind of hung up, right? Uh, 502 bad gateway. Uh, usually, you might see that if maybe your proxy connection is from maybe Nginx to PHP in the background, right? And that connection just wasn't set correctly. You might get a bad gateway there. And then 500 internal server error, there's probably an error code somewhere. Again, but all of these, uh, nothing wrong with you, it's me, not you, right? Um, or the server saying it's me, not you. Right? Uh, again, they're, 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 I highlight these often, right? 400 versus 500, because that begins to tell us where to begin troubleshooting, right? 
if I get a 400 error back, I need to tell the customer, look at their code, look at how they're making that request. Right? So you're either looking for something that's not there or asking for it in a bad way. If it's a 500 error, I can say, hey, let's look at the server. Let's look at where we're proxy connectors off to. Let's look to see uh, maybe where that connection is maybe messing up on that server side. Or maybe it just needs to restart. Right? It's Java and it does some that once in a while. So, cool. Let's see here. All right. Um, cool. So, let's talk about tools now. Um, two of my favorite tools, right? Curl and HTTP Pi. Uh, I'll do a quick demo of them here in a little bit, but I just want to get through these slides at least a little uh, before we go on. Um, so these are command line tools. These are tools you can use uh, from, your, from your terminal to kind of make requests back, right? Uh, to download files, to interact with web servers. Uh, HTTP Pi is meant to be a replacement for curl uh, and to make requests in a bit more of a uh, streamlined fashion, we'll say, right? There's a lot you can do with curl uh, with a lot of flags and adding headers. HTTP Pi just makes it a little bit easier, right? And we're all about making things a little bit easier. Uh, and then on the plugin side or the browser side, if I want to start to analyze, right, let's say I get really interested in what's going on with every single request that I make on the web page, which you realize real quick you don't want to because there's so many. Um, <laughs> you have two options you can have uh, Firebug, which is one of my favorites. Not only can you look at your requests, but so much more. Uh, and then live HTTP headers uh, to go ahead and capture those requests, right? Uh, HTTP headers has an option to capture those requests and then play it back. It's kind of nice, right? Again, all tools that, that we use every day when troubleshooting um, any of the number of problems we have in servers every single day, right? Um, let's see here. Is that this one? Okay. So let's use, let's bring up some of these tools right quick. Get some time. Yeah, you made about eight minutes. Start on time and actually finish on time? All right, so real quick, uh, I want to show you all here. Let's do this. Let's bring up. Oh. That is a very dangerous thing to do, right? You know, mirroring screens. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Where's my server? <laughs> so I mentioned curl, right? So we can do curl. Um, curl, right? HTTP. Ohio. Awesome. Right, so we get the response back, right? That's simple enough. That's a basic one. Right? We can also do so this right here is kind of streamlining what we saw our earlier example, right? That that telnet command we did earlier and actually doing get slash, right? That's streamlining or this is streamlining that request, right? I can also go through and say, just give me the header information, right? And say, oh, cool, right? She gave back the information that you get. Just give me back the response information, right? Here we see that we saw uh, HTTP 1.1, all right? Um, we get 200 OK back from the server, right? And we get different information, different information about the server. Kind of nice. Um, if I want to do something like, uh, let's see here, I can also say uh, dash H, right? And maybe host, um, you know, Ohio, I guess that'll work. Now, this is kind of redundant, but I'm giving an example how you can add additional headers to that request if you wanted to, right? Um, to kind of compare this, we can also do, uh, as another tool earlier I showed you, HTTP. Yeah, so not to, not to be confused with HTTPD, HTTP is an HTTP Pi application I was showing you earlier. Um, what's kind of nice, you can get information back in various formats. Uh, most, probably most popular, even something coming back in JSON. It's kind of nice uh, to be able to parse that data, right? Uh, but then you see here uh, how, how to read out, oops, how to read out your method URL request, right? So a very basic HTTP, um, we'll say google.com. And we get back is an example of a 301 saying, hey, move permanently. And uh, let's see here. Some of these other ones right here, right, we have that uh, just maybe non standard headers, right? But saying, move permanently, go to www.google.com, right? <coughs> let's do that for the sake of demoing, right? Again, nothing crazy here. Let me get back our information, right? This is more involved, it'd be like a big ta-da, but it's not. <laughs> so. All right, so switching back to the browser itself. Um, you know what, let's just use the site I have up now. So there is a plugin called Firebug, which is one of my favorite tools. Uh, when text come on the floor and they start day one, they're having this installed, I'm asking to install it right away. Because it will, you want to install it, you want to install it before you need it, right? So we have to restart everything and have that whole process. So let's make a request real quick. 
Um, what I like is that I basically get all the requests uh, <coughs> a little bigger. And then I can go through and examine that request, right? And here we see a lot of things that I've talked about in the slides, right? So it's, again, keeping giving it a frame of reference of how all that information ties in to actual application here. Right? I have the headers from my response headers, my request headers, I can just actual response content, right? Um, then get kind of information there, right? So this is a nice way to start to analyze, right? What's also nice is that on the right hand side here, we have a timeline of how long these requests took. Absolutely useful when you have an image that they be in four or five megs, the customer is, why is my site slow? Where your, lo your logo is 100 by 100, but it's five megs. Let's, let's change that. <laughs> um, you know, problems make themselves really, really apparent when you have something on this side here just taking forever, right? Uh, I've, also had I've also used this to troubleshoot a problem where, again, customers saying, site slow, it gets, like, loads about halfway and stops. When we used this tool, what we found was that by halfway through, he was making a call to another site, another service uh, for ads. That she wasn't responding, was having problems of their own. And so it hung the entire site up and it wasn't going to render uh, until it got that code back, right? So it was a way to show the customer, hey, here's where it's hung up. It's not us, right? All of these domains here are you and you're good. Um, this domain you're going for is the one slowing us down. Okay. Uh, so again, way of troubleshooting, get information that I can put to a customer and say, here's your problem, right? Rather than saying my site's slow. Okay. And the last one, if I have this, I don't have it installed. Let's find out. Uh, live HTTP headers. Okay. Uh, this here I can choose to capture or not capture, right? Let's make the request. And we see the request, and all the headers come through right here, right? I can save them for later analysis. I could replay them if I wanted to, things like that. Okay. So, all fun stuff. All right, we on time. Okay. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So, in closing, right? Um, usually in closing, <coughs> I switch back to the first slide because I'm lazy and not putting in a summary slide. Oh, I forget every time. And I have to go back to the agenda, right? Kind of as a last thing. Um, as with any presentation, right? Tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them. Tell them what you're going to right? Um, I know that first when I started presenting stuff. I thought it was really bad. I thought it'd be better, but anyway. Um, so, uh, you know, so first off to why this topic, right? Again, it, it's about, about back to basics. It's about having an understanding of an underlying protocol that handles almost all the requests for web server. Right, so that was, having a good understanding of that is absolutely key and essential. Um, so we talk about what is HTTP at a very high level, right? We talked about it's a protocol. Uh, version two is coming out, right? But mainly a lot about version one, uh, one point one. Talking about methods, right? Get uh, requests or to get options head, right? Those requests are safe. Uh, Giving information from the server. Talk about put and post. Sending information to the server. Right? Talking about headers. Again, headers are more just a way that the client and the server can share a bit more information about what they want or what they prefer. Uh, response codes are important, right? Because it tells us, it's the server telling us, was it okay? Was there an error? Was it your fault or my fault? Right? And we talk about a few tools to help you troubleshoot and, and get deeper into uh, any problems you might be having. Okay? Um, and so, with all that, uh, let's see here. Closing. If you're interested to have questions or just want to talk to me later on, contact information is up there. Uh, my name is Alex Suarez. I'm a principal engineer for Rackspace. Uh, all that means is I do a lot of training and mentoring of our support Vortex. Uh, a lot of information like this, uh, both internal and external. I also do a lot of training uh, with our internal training team for like Red Hat training, stuff like that. So a lot of cool stuff there. All the social information as well. Uh, you probably find one just about anything uh, with the same name. Um, I did a bio uh, a few weeks back. I hate writing about myself like any person, tech person does, I guess. Uh, so a good friend of mine did it for me. Uh, there we go. So I promise I put it up there, show everybody, and uh, at least give her a shout out for that. So she's awesome. She works for Blue Box now, I think. I forget where she works now. Somewhere around there. Um, anyway, so. Oh, never mind. Well, 
usually we have a booth somewhere where we go. Uh, we don't think we have it today, so we are, but whatever. Um, <laughs> so, Q&A. Any questions, thoughts, concerns, anything, or no, whiskey. I know it's early, but we still talk about whiskey. Yes. Are users going to get anything with 2.0? Um, they should. They should see a performance increase, right? Because it should be, the big thing from Speedy is trying to organize that data so it gets back to the client in a faster fashion, right? Um, Google's had for around for a while, and Chrome actually implemented Speedy a while back. Um, but from the client side, we should see this a lot of improvement on, on getting content back a little faster. Good question. Talk about how REST APIs look back. I mean, they're all using HTTP. Yeah, so the so question about REST APIs. Um, anything in particular or just? Um, I don't know what to say about them, I guess. Okay, so you're um, using the put and. Yeah, so yeah, so, yeah, so they, they use methods to permission to a server and say, hey, I want to make this request. Um, usually, for example, when we see them making a pair request to, hey, create a new server for us in the cloud, or create this or that for us, store this file for us, <coughs> right? I want to part of that request in uh, as part of the head reserve. So, yeah, but I guess I'm. Off the top of my head, I can't talk too much, I guess, in depth. So. Can you put your slide URL? Sure, yeah. Slide URL. Cool. It originally was supposed to be um, fitting time in. Um, oh, that's cool. Okay. I actually did that quotation. Is that? That was the only reason I knew about 204. Okay. Work yeah. That stuff every day, and I'm like, oh, yeah, hey, delete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I actually did a presentation a while back internally on on um, APIs and doing requests and like that. Uh, it's been a long time since I've done it though, so it's kind of not as fresh. Uh, but all right, uh, any questions? Sorry. <laughs> 